Welcome to this Wine Health Black Belt podcast. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson, and I'm the host of the podcast where we work to try and bring you the latest and greatest in wine research and innovation. I'm excited to bring part two of our episode with Dr. John Patience. Dr. Patience started off uh, last week by giving us a bit of an overview of his efforts to try and describe the economic and performance impact that we see with various diseases. He had a very unique opportunity uh, to collaborate with some of the folks uh, uh, work with him at Iowa State University and review different flows with different levels of health challenges and ultimately try and mine the performance data of those flows to understand the economics that health can rob from producers. John uh, gave us an overview of the, the background on the case here last week. And without further ado, we're going to dive straight into the discussion to get into more detail. In case you didn't listen to our first episode, I'd encourage you to go back and check that one out before you dive into this one. Uh, but as a brief introduction, Dr. John Patience is a professor emeritus of animal science at Iowa State University. He's also associated with the Prairie Swine Center. Dr. John, uh, let's go ahead and dive back into this. Well, let's translate those performance differences, John, into economics, into the bottom line for the producer. You know, how did the, how did the barns with the higher health challenge compare economically to the barn with the lower health challenge? Really good question. That really gets to the guts of, of the study. Um, and we want to recognize Lee Schultz, who in the Department of Economics at Iowa State, because he helped us with this. And uh, But first, to give a bit of a backdrop, uh, uh, I want to emphasize we ran the trial to a constant final body weight. And we know that that's not typically what would happen in commercial practice, uh, because when the, when the barn's got to be emptied out, the barn's got to be emptied out. But I like to run to a constant body weight because then we can compare things like growth rate and feed efficiency uh, more directly. And the days to market was a big one. 133 days to market for the low challenge pigs, 148 days. So full two weeks extra to get these pigs to the same final body weight of 285. Uh, carcass yield was um, actually just a little bit higher on the high challenge pigs, but that's not surprising. Um, we, we kind of expected that. Lean yield was about the same at 55%. So that uh, and back fat was about the same as, as well, Clayton. So let's turn to economics, which is what you're really asking. So what we did, uh, remember, so the economics is the economics of 1999. The market price was 67 cents dressed. Uh, feed cost was $200 a ton. Uh, yardage, we charged in at 11 and a half cents. Uh, veterinary expenses, we charged at $5 a pig, uh, but then we adjusted it. We kept track of the number of treatments and added that on to the basic $5 charge. Um, so in terms of, uh, we uh, mentioned we uh, scaled this up to a 2,400 head barn. And so the total revenue in this barn, the low challenge pigs uh, was $306,000. And this was to fixed weight. So we modeled it, and then I'll come back afterwards with a fixed time. Yeah. And the income, the total revenue on the high challenge was only $246,000. So, uh, you know, what's that, $50,000, $60,000, $65,000 different. On a per pig basis, um, the profit per pig placed on the low challenge barn was $13.50. But on the high challenge, it was a loss of $5.72. So a swing of uh, nineteen dollars and twenty five cents. Wow! Uh, and the intermediate uh, was a swing of eight dollars and ninety four cents. I mean, that's almost the cost of just the housing for the pigs by itself. I mean, that's yep. a that's a pretty major delta in cost there. And for producers thinking about, you know, how do I how do I afford an investment in health? You know, sometimes they think about it the other way, right? How do you not afford an investment in health? Exactly. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's uh, especially when the times are tough, it can be the difference between making money or losing money or how much money you're going to lose. And and that's a big swing of almost twenty dollars per pig. Yep. If we uh, we also did what's called sensitivity analysis and we said, well, what happens if we 
change the market price by 20% upward and downward and change feed costs by 20% upwards and downwards. And so again, comparing the low challenge to the high challenge barn, remembering we were uh, we had a, a, a loss of, of uh, net income of $23.27. If we had a 20% decline in market price, that $23.27 only went to $24.58. And if the price went up by, um, uh, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, it, uh, it went to, uh, down to $22.51, pardon me. But if we, if we uh, lowered the price of feed by 20%, we say, hey, that, that might help us. It didn't help very much because it went from 23.27 to 24.58. So it didn't, didn't really help very much. And that was one conclusion from our sensitivity analysis. Didn't matter whether market price went up or down by 20% and feed went up or down 20%, the differences were still, roughly speaking, in the same kind of ballpark. It's just hard to overcome a producer who can market 20% more product than another producer, right? That's exactly it's right. They're in fields of, uh, of canola or corn or something like that, right? If you can raise 20% more crop than the person next door to you, boy, you're going to sell into the same market conditions. I know we all like to brag about how well we sell our, our pig crop or our grain crop, but we all sell it into the same market at the end of the day. And if you're selling 20% more, boy, that's uh, that leaves a lot of room to be wrong in other areas or to not have an advantage in other areas if you can maintain that high health status. Right on. And yeah, absolutely, uh, Clayton. And so that was a scenario where we said, okay, in this 2,400 head barn, we do have the time we're not time constrained, so we can feed the pigs out to the 285 pounds. Now, what if we said, well, we don't have uh, unlimited time and the pigs got to go to market and we got 133 days on average to deal with. Mm -hmm. What's the difference there? And in that case, we went from uh, gross revenues in the barn of $307,000 with the low uh, health challenge to $229,000 in the high challenge barn. So now we're getting a hit, not just because of the mortality, but also reduced weight. Yep. And uh, now, of course, then we spent less money because we had fewer pigs and sure. we didn't put the same amount of weight on them. But the uh, the net income for the barn turn went from just under thirty four thousand uh, dollars positive to a loss of sixteen thousand dollars or that worked out to. Uh, a loss of $20.75 per pig compared to the low challenge. Pigs. Very good. Tremendous stuff, John. And very timely with us uh, transitioning markets. You know, your sensitivity tables are something a producer could grab this paper, take a look at, or their veterinarian, their nutritionist, they could grab this, take a look at, say, all right, these sensitivity tables help us dial in our feed cost, our market price, right? What is our health opportunity based on that information? Right. So anybody that wants to see this paper, it's in translational animal science. It's open access, so you don't have to have a a uh, you know subscription to the journal. Don't have to be a member of the society. You can just go uh, use Google Scholar, look it up, and uh, and there's the paper if anybody wants to look at it in more detail. Salmonella presents significant challenges to pig health and performance, and poses food safety risks to humans. As the first and only vaccine offering live attenuated strains of both Salmonella cholera suis and Typhimurium. Enterosol Salmonella TC from Boringer Ingelheim protects pigs against both serotypes with a single oral dose. Talk to your Boringer Ingelheim representative to learn more. It's tremendous. Thanks for all the work, John, that uh, you do. And, you know, you mentioned the great team at Iowa State, the Prairie Swine Center team. Um, really appreciate all the support of you and your groups uh, that really help the industry, especially in these times of need. Great. Well, it's my pleasure, and thanks very much for the opportunity to chat to today, Clayton. I know you're a busy guy. Well, we should thank our audience, John. Um, you know, without them, we certainly couldn't be doing this. Um, uh, for everybody out there, we really appreciate you listening to the Swine Health Black Belt podcast. If, if you haven't seen our website, please go check it out at swinehealthblackbelt.com. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe so that you, you get not only this wonderful episode with John, but all the episodes we put out every week. Um, and please, uh, if you enjoyed it, tell a friend, forward this episode to somebody. Um, we really appreciate that word of mouth uh, communication and recommendations. For Dr. John Patience, I'm Dr. Clayton Johnson. It's been our pleasure to bring you this episode of the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast. Please have a great rest of your day. 
Hey everybody, we're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it, share it with us, please feel free to email the research to hello at wisenetics.com. That's H-E-L-L-O at W-I-S-E-N-E-T-I-X dot com.